Alexander Hamilton has been depicted on the $10 bill since 1928, but in 2015, he was slated to be replaced by Harriet Tubman. In a stunning reversal, Hamilton kept his place. Although Alexander Hamilton has recently resurged in popularity, he was a significant player at the beginning of America's independence. He was so vocal and hardworking that he was well known during his lifetime, even if everyone didn't like him. Hamilton shaped the United States in many ways, but his impressive journey began from much humbler beginnings. Hamilton was born on the island of Nevis in the British West Indies. His mother was divorced, so both Alexander and his brother were illegitimate. When his father left the family over controversy about being in a relationship with a previously married woman, Alexander's mother worked to maintain a small business and give her boys a good education. Sadly, having succumbed to a fever in 1768, she did not live to see her son grow up to help found a country. The boys were now orphans, and after a failed guardianship from an older cousin, they both went their separate ways, looking for employment. Alexander Hamilton was about 14 years old at the time. He got work in a merchant house and found the work stimulating. Hamilton learned skills and principles that would later help him in America, such as the principles of economics, but he also became increasingly aware of class structures. He spent hours working while his peers spent their paychecks on luxuries, and he soon attracted enough attention to gather the funds to move to Boston to pursue an education. He left Nevis in 1772 or early 1773, never again returning to the island of his childhood. By 1774, Hamilton was deeply involved with the revolutionaries in New York. He even gave a speech on July 6, 1774, about liberty, justice, and freedom, setting himself up as one of the most influential voices in the revolution. His voice would continue to move the nation as it struggled to establish itself as an independent country, shaping the country into the nation it is today. Here are just seven ways that Alexander Hamilton helped shape the United States of America. Number 1. Hamilton served as one of Washington's aides during the American Revolution Hamilton led a small group at the start of the Revolution. They were focused on strengthening defenses around New York City. When the American army was forced to retreat in 1776, Hamilton's company came under George Washington's leadership, and Washington was impressed with Hamilton's leadership skills. In 1777, he finally convinced him to join the staff of generals where Hamilton was promoted to lieutenant colonel. Hamilton's assistance was essential to winning the Revolutionary War because he provided Washington with the eloquent rhetoric that the general struggled with, as well as political and economic depth. He soon had access to all confidential information and was even issuing orders on Washington's behalf. His official position also included being a translator between the French officers and Washington when the French joined the war. These four years were the making of Alexander Hamilton. He broadened his economic and political education and made lifelong connections across the colonies. Hamilton wielded considerable power while he served as Washington's aide. He issued orders and could even demand troops from senior commanders, which did not make him popular with everyone. Anyone who disagreed with him also faced his sharp rhetoric. So although Hamilton made many connections, he also began the process of making enemies. The American Revolution could have ended very differently if Washington had not had Alexander Hamilton at his side. The young man helped strengthen the general's weaknesses, lending Washington his eloquence to lead his newfound country to independence. Number 2. Hamilton advocated allowing loyalists to join the United States after the Revolution It may seem strange that a great army veteran like Alexander Hamilton would be interested in reconciling with the loyalists. But after the revolution, he was deeply interested in stabilizing this new country. After settling in New York, Hamilton became deeply concerned about Governor George Clinton's policies, which included persecuting loyalists. Even after the war, people who had either supported the British or remained neutral suffered from persecution, which included property seizure, special taxes, or even tarring and feathering. The divisiveness of the war continued, and these people were looking to leave the country taking their wealth, businesses, and skills with them. Hamilton realized that this was set New York back at least 20 years economically, so he began advocating for reconciliation. It may seem self-centered, but many of Hamilton's political views 
were shaped by his economic understandings. Hamilton was not the only person advocating for an end to violence, but he became one of the most outspoken advocates. He was even accused of treachery at the time, but his determination to do what was best for his country helped him influence people away from vindictiveness and towards building a unified nation. Using his skills as a lawyer, he built a successful practice around defending loyalists' interests and helped the country move past the revolution. Number 3. Hamilton Helped Write the Constitution When the United States began, it did not have the Constitution. Instead, it functioned under a document called the Articles of Confederation. It was not strong enough to run the country, and the national economy suffered for several years. It became so dire that the government didn't have the money to pay soldiers who fought in the American Revolution, which led to a march on the Capitol in 1783. Finally, the state representatives agreed to meet to discuss the financial problems. Hamilton was part of that meeting, and together with James Madison, he convinced the Assembly to engage in constitutional reform instead. Hamilton was part of the Constitutional Convention in 1787, a group of delegates who gathered from all states except Rhode Island to discuss reform. There was so much discussion that several key issues, like slavery, were avoided until the last minute. Hamilton's radical suggestions for a strong central government were mainly ignored, but his ideas made other centralizing reforms seem moderate. During a six-hour speech, Hamilton advocated for a king, elected for life, and a strong executive branch that could override local authority. William Patterson, a New Jersey representative, argued for a central government with strong state power. The convention spent most of its time debating representation and how to balance wealth, population, and special interests. Writing a foundational government document is not easy, and Hamilton was right in the middle of it. He was even part of the special committee that gave the Constitution its final polish before the convention signed it. Number 4. Hamilton Wrote the Federalist Papers Although the Constitutional Convention was confident in the new Constitution, the rest of the country was more divided. The states needed to ratify it, but the borderline states required convincing. This fight played well to Hamilton's strengths. He excelled at written persuasion, even if his techniques could border on bombastic. He was one of the leaders in the fight for constitutional approval, and the Federalist Papers is one of Hamilton's most enduring legacies. The Federalist Papers was a series of 85 essays intended to educate the people of New York about the Constitution. Alexander Hamilton teamed up with James Madison and John Jay, but he wrote two-thirds of the essays himself. The extensive pieces displayed the writer's rhetorical eloquence and political expertise to convince the people to support the Constitution. Four essays were published a week to support this campaign, and they covered almost all aspects of government leaving a political legacy that we still live with today. In summer 1788, New York and Virginia voted in favor of the Constitution, proving that the Federalist Papers had done their job. Other states still held out on approving this new government document, but Hamilton was heralded as a hero in New York City. Thanks to his hard work, America had changed from a weak collection of states to a nation strong enough to handle her finances and protect herself in the future. Number 5. Hamilton Established the Bank of the United States President Washington appointed Alexander Hamilton to his cabinet as the Treasury Secretary, and he immediately got to work creating reports and building economic systems that would support America into the future. Beginning in December of 1790, Hamilton began advocating for the creation of a central bank. With his strong economic education, Hamilton knew that a central bank was necessary. It would support the national treasury in several ways. It would provide a uniform currency, manage the national money supply, store government savings, and be a lending authority for both public and private ventures. Not everyone understood the need for a national bank or agreed that Hamilton should have it. Other founding fathers, like Madison, Adams, and Jefferson, opposed him, arguing that establishing a bank was unconstitutional. They feared that establishing a national bank would start a tradition of expanding government authority, eventually leading to tyranny. Madison tried to stop the bill's progress in the House of Representatives, but his argument for a stricter constitutional interpretation was unsuccessful. The bill passed 39 votes to 20. Madison wasn't finished. 
Instead, he appealed to George Washington to veto the bill. Washington listened to arguments from both Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton. But Hamilton's argument, which was almost 15,000 words long, proved more persuasive. He argued that the bank was necessary for the government to complete its constitutional duties, like collecting taxes, regulating trade, and supporting the military. Washington was so impressed that he signed the bill into law the next day, giving Alexander Hamilton the bank he wanted. However, the Bank of the United States was not without issues. In July 1791, the nation experienced its first financial bubble. Hamilton prevented economic collapse by having the Bank of New York buy $150,000 of government securities. But the averted disaster still tarnished Hamilton's reputation, even though it gave the country the national bank it needed to find financial security. Number 6. Hamilton Established the National Mint the National Mint is essential to creating a standardized national currency, which was a necessary part of the National Bank. Even though America adopted the dollar as its currency, that didn't mean much in the nation's early days. Because the government wasn't producing its own money, people were still using many different types of foreign currency, which led to economic chaos. Exchange rates for foreign coins varied unpredictably and widespread counterfeiting made it challenging to trust their payments were authentic. As always, Hamilton threw himself into his work, meticulously researching the coinage of other countries and constructing proposals to unify the American currency in 1791. He even worked with Thomas Jefferson on his research. Jefferson was deeply interested in coins, and the two men could still work together on shared interests. Jefferson's involvement was also more readily given because the National Mint was less divisive than the National Bank. Hamilton had diverse ideas for the new American coins. He wanted to create coins of different values so everyone could use them, regardless of class. He also wanted the coins to be stamped with symbols to encourage patriotism. Many of his ideas became part of the National Mint, and Americans still see its results today when they look through their pocket change. The National Mint was established in 1792, but it did not come under Treasury control. Instead, President Washington placed the new mint under the State Department, which Thomas Jefferson ran. There were a couple of reasons for this. One reason was that Jefferson was interested in the mint, which made giving it to him a logical choice. Another reason is that the President felt Hamilton was overworked and didn't need another responsibility. Although Hamilton strongly disagreed, he never convinced the government to move the mint to the treasury. But his work led to the formal establishment of American currency. Number 7. Hamilton was part of starting political parties Even though Hamilton was an eloquent speaker and powerful writer, he was often outspoken, and his forceful personality meant that he made many enemies while trying to shape America. At the time, though, political parties were seen as corrupting influences, so Hamilton's contributions to political parties were unintentional. Factions began forming around Hamilton and Madison as they split over Hamilton's economic vision for America, including a national bank. Jefferson soon joined Madison in opposition to Hamilton, fearing that a strong central government would lead to a dictatorship. Soon, like-minded people began gathering together, and the ideological differences between the two groups began to harden. Hamilton's group called themselves the Federalists. Jefferson's group called themselves the Republicans, although their party differed from the modern Republican Party. Hamilton and Jefferson could not contain their differences to only the political arena. They attacked each other repeatedly in the press, and the viciousness of their words indicates how deeply each man thought the other was a threat to the new nation. The split between Hamilton and Jefferson soon dominated political life ushering in the era of political parties that continue to shape America today. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Alexander Hamilton, check out our book, Alexander Hamilton a captivating guide to one of the founding fathers of the United States of America. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.